passages of scripture I want to uh, bring to your hearing. Hallelujah. St. Matthew chapter 16, and there we will read verses 13 through uh, 19. St. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. And then put your finger there and go to Ephesians chapter 6. Praise the Lord, verses 10 through 20. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to let you know in advance that we're not going to be able to finish this lesson uh, because it is meaty and it is weighty. Praise the Lord. There are many facets to it. But we're going to get started on it. Praise the Lord. You'll just have to come back and hear the conclusion of the matter. Amen. On another occasion. Praise the Lord. But we have one of the finest first ladies in all of Christendom. If we could get her at mind to begin reading at St. Matthew chapter 16 and at verse 13 through 19. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea, Philippi, mm -hmm. He asked his disciples, saying, What did he say? Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, What? Some say that thou art John the Baptist, mm -hmm. some Elias, yes. and others, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. or of one of the prophets. Or one of the other prophets. He said unto them, What? But whom say ye that I am? Who are you going to say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, mm -hmm. Thou art the Christ. You are the Christ. The Son of the living God. You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what? Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. Flesh and blood haven't revealed this unto you. But my Father which is in heaven. But my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, and I say unto you, thou art Peter, thou art Petros, and upon this rock, and upon this rock, I will build my church, I will build my church, and the gates of hell mm -hmm. shall not prevail against it. Read. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Whatever you bind on earth. Shall be bound in heaven. My God. Read. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth. Mm -hmm. Shall be loosed in heaven. Praise the Lord. Quickly. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren. Finally. My God, after all I said, finally. Mm -hmm. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong. Look at somebody and say, be strong. Be strong. Amen. This is not time for you to be weak. Mm -hmm. I know people say, well, can I just be vulnerable? No. Mm -hmm. Be strong. In the Lord. In the Lord. And in the power of his might. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. What's going to help you be strong? You got to put on the whole armor of God. That ye may, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You may be able to stand against the devil's tactics. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because you're not fighting against humanity. But against principalities. But you are fighting against principalities. Against powers. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Come on. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Come on. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. that ye may be able to withstand mm -hmm. in the evil day. Yes. And having done all. After you have done everything you could do. To stand. Mm -hmm. Stand therefore. Come on and stand some more. Having your loins girt don't about with truth. Don't look like he's giving you no reason to fall. Mm -hmm. He says after you have done all, keep on standing. Uh -huh. And have your loins Gird about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the, bless, the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Come on. Above all. Yes. Taking the shield of faith. Yes. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench 
all the fiery darts of the wicked. And what else you going to do? And take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation. And the sword. And the soul. Of the spirit. Of the spirit. Which is the word of God. Which is God's word. Praying always. Oh, my God. Praying. So it's not enough to have the word. Right. Yeah. But you got to pray always. always. With all prayer. And, and you can't just pray some old Caesar milk toast kind of weak prayer. Uh -huh. But you got to pray with all prayer. And supplication. And supplication. In the spirit. My God, you got to do it in the spirit. And watching there unto. And then you got to watch. With all perseverance. Lord, you got to, Lord, you got to keep on standing. But you got to persevere. You and supplication. And supplication. For all saints. You got to do it for all saints. There's a reason for this. And for me. <laughs> and he said, please pray for me. That utterance may be given unto me. That I may have the ability or the utterance. Mm -hmm. That I may open my mouth boldly. That I can speak boldly. Do you pray for your preacher that he can speak boldly? Read. To make known the mystery of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, mm -hmm. that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Father, may we do no damage to your word, but speak that which is sound, which is right, which is true. Lord, let not your word fall to the ground, but let it accomplish that which you have sent it out to do. This we do ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I know there's a lot of reading, praise God, and there's a lot to unpack. Uh, in, in most of these cases, I would be tempted uh, to deal with uh, the pieces of the armor. Uh, but the reason why I had Lady to read uh, all of the pieces of the armor, I wanted to uh, give you a particular context of this whole of the scripture that I'm going to deal with on tonight. Amen? As believers, we belong to the kingdom of God. Amen? Uh, Jesus, in actual, did not preach church. He preached the kingdom of God. In fact, praise the Lord, when you hear Jesus talk about church, he probably, the word church, ecclesia, is probably mentioned out of his mouth maybe twice in the New Testament. Now, the apostles, they say church. But Jesus, when he began to preach, the Bible says the first thing he opened up his mouth says, repent for the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise the Lord. And so, praise the Lord, we are a part of the kingdom of God. And beloved, the church is not stained glass windows, not praise team, not lights, not music. Those, these things are tools that are used to help promote the kingdom. But the church is the authority of the kingdom of God on earth. It's the governmental head authority of the kingdom of God on earth. We are charged with the responsibility of expansion and promotion of the kingdom agenda. The foundation of the kingdom is the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And that this message that God sent his son to redeem man from his sins is our mantra. Are you understanding me? Praise the Lord. Jesus gives us dominion to do these things and gives us power to do these things. And he did that through his death, burial, and resurrection. And then he gave us a blueprint of what this was to look like through his life on earth. Are you understanding me? And so tonight I want to talk, amen, or at least began this subject, the kingdom advancement agenda. The kingdom advancement agenda. Now, we have uh, just come out of um, Resurrection Sunday celebration. And we, you know, as many did other churches, uh, 
and did a lot to prepare for that special day. Um, we probably invited more people than we normally do. Um, wanted to make sure that our singing was top notch. Um, that if you smiled, that, that your smile was just a little bit brighter. <laughs> the purpose of that was because you were going to be dealing with more people. The Easter service is one of the greatest evangelistic tools uh, that the church can use because if people don't go to church any other time, they definitely go on Resurrection Sunday. And so it is, if you don't prepare for it, it's a missed opportunity. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, what I really want to deal with tonight, I want to deal with Amen. The purposes of the church, praise the Lord. I want to deal with, amen, our advancement of the kingdom agenda because we are the governmental head of the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. We are the governmental head of the kingdom of God. And I think sometimes, amen, we get, uh, praise the Lord, uh, bogged down in the weeds of the details so that sometimes we forget what our real purpose is here for, what we're here to do. And so I want to go back, and I, and I know you guys have been hearing kingdom, kingdom, kingdom for a long time, praise the Lord. But, but I, I want to go back, I want to lift it up, I want to reiterate it, because praise the Lord, this is a season of evangelism. Say that with me, this is a season of evangelism. The Bible says, praise the Lord, that the harvest time is now. The Bible tells us to look out on the fields. They are already white and ready to be harvested. Pray ye that the Lord of harvest would send laborers. Huh? For the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we are in a season of harvest. There are people that are literally looking, amen, for the hope of the gospel. And they want to know what it really means. And this is really the finest hour of the church to represent the kingdom of God. Not just behind the four walls of the church, but in every faucet of life, in every, amen, echelon of life. Are you understanding me? Praise the Lord. I know a lot of times when we think about church, or, or, or the things of God, we only replicate it, praise the Lord, to a couple of hours on Sunday morning or maybe a midweek service. And that's the extent of how we serve the Lord or our own personal private prayer time and, and our own personal private Bible study. And that's as far as it goes. But the truth of the matter is God never called the church to be private. God never called the church to be separate from the world in the sense that it never touches the world. He says, come out from among them and be ye separate. He's not saying be separated. He's saying come out from among them in the way you do things, in your attitude, in the way you live, praise the Lord. But in order to be what the Lord has called us to be, you cannot be separated. From the world. Because there is an agenda. So tonight, praise the Lord, I want to hopefully talk for a few moments about three things. I want to talk about the revelation. I want to talk about the responsibility. And I want to talk about the resistance. Can I do that tonight? I want to talk about the revelation, the responsibility, and the resistance. When we first get into, amen, uh, Matthew chapter 16, around verse 18, Jesus uh, is coming to the end of his uh, earthly ministry and getting ready to transition and, and let go of leadership. He wants to know, amen, have they took an poll of what the world is saying about him? It is important for you to know what the community is saying about the church. If Jesus, I don't care what nobody think about me. I don't care what, no, well, that's not biblical. Jesus, ain't none of y'all in here good as Jesus. And he had a question, what are they saying about me? 
Why is it important? Because I want to make sure that the message that I've given in these three and a half years is a clear, concise message. And some of them thought that he was Elijah or Jeremiah. Some of them thought that he could have been John the Baptist risen from the dead or one of the other prophets. And, and so the outsiders did not get it right because they really didn't know who he was. But, but if anybody should know who he is, it should be the ones that have spent the most time with him. And, and so he looks at him and says, well, who are you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter speaks up and says, you're the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. And the Lord blesses him and says, you're blessed because mere human reasoning did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Beloved, before you can have a real testimony, you must have a real re revelation of who Jesus is. And it got to be more than what your mama told you. It got to be more than what your bishop told you. It got to be more than, praise the Lord, what the pastor and the mothers and the evangelists told you. You have to have a relationship with the Lord and have a revelation of who he is. Because he looks at, at Simon and says, because you got this revelation, I'm going to name you foundation. I'm going to name you rock. I'm going to name you stone. And upon the foundation of the revelation of who I am, I'm going to build my church. You can never build where there is no revelation. Hear what I'm telling you. You can never build where there is no revelation. If a person doesn't have a revelation of who you are, if a person don't have a revelation of the vision, if they don't understand you, praise the Lord, you can't build on them. I.e., praise the Lord, God, a man told Adam, don't eat of the fruit that is in the midst of the garden because in the day that you eat of it, you will die. He looks at Eve and said, don't even touch it, girl. Praise the Lord. But see, Eve didn't get the word. Eve got a secondhand word. Adam got the revelation. Satan was able to fool her because there was no revelation. Some of you are quite satisfied being warmed by the fire of somebody else's revelation and you're spiritually lazy when you really need to get a man and get a revelation of who God is for yourself. When I know him for myself, I don't care if you flip the script on me, I know him. Preacher walk away from the church and say, I don't even believe in Jesus no more. You ain't going to stop believing. Because I have a revelation. And you see, God is not just enough to know about God. He must be revealed to you. You, you. you can know facts about God. People know facts about Jesus. They can read scripture, but they don't know him. That's why they do all kind of crazy stuff in the name of God. And it has nothing to do with the character of God because they really don't know God. Israel knew a man God's actions, but Moses knew God's ways. My God, can I talk a little bit? Praise the Lord. So, so, so the revelation first is who is Jesus? Who is he and, and why did he come? Well, to ask that question, you must, un, you must ask the question, well, who is man? Because when Jesus comes, Jesus comes in the likeness of a man. So, which lets you know that if God would come in imitating a man, then man must be something important in the earth. Bible teaches us that when God created both male and female, he created them and gave them dominion in Genesis 1.26. I want you to have dominion over everything. Praise the Lord. I, I'm, I'm making you little gods on this earth. You're going to rule the earth. Every, all of my creation is going to be under your hand, under your tutelage, under your control. Y'all quiet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he gave them dominion. Praise the Lord. Satan comes in through trickery and deceit, offers them something that they already have. 
You will become like God's knowing good and evil. Well, first, I'm already like him. I'm in his image. I am a speaking spirit. Are you understanding me? And because they disobeyed God, they fell into sin and were separated from a, rela a direct relationship with God. They were separated. And as a result, Satan comes in and usurps the authority and begins to set up a para kingdom on this earth. Hallelujah. Satan has never had an original thought. He is a copycat. And so he starts the process, praise the Lord, of creating an alternative kingdom on this earth. He gets into mankind. He gets into the systems of the world and spreads his lies. You, you, you'll find out, praise the Lord, that, that God gets so uh, uh, fed up with man that he says, you know what, I'm going to uh, destroy you. And so for 40 days and 40 nights, he caused it to rain on the earth. And the fountains of the deep were broken up. And, and, and everybody was destroyed except for eight souls. And then even after the eight souls, praise the Lord, hallelujah, are saved by way of the ark, amen, there come a man by the name of Nimrod. The Bible says he is a mighty hunter before God. And, and really, it mean, his name means rebellion. He is a mighty hunter, praise the Lord, in the face of God. He's a leader, praise our God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and he, amen, leads, praise the Lord, those people in the land of Shinar, which we call Babylon. Amen. To, to build a tower whose top would reach to heaven so that they would never be scattered again. In other words, I, I don't care if a flood ever comes. We're going to be so high that the flood can't reach us. And God looks at them and says, oh, these people are one. They're going to do it. He confuses their language and the place becomes named Babylon, which is confusion. So the systems of the world comes in. And man loses, amen, his standing in the world. He's always had dominion. He's always had power, but he does not know it because sin has him blind to that. And so God spends, praise the Lord, the time of history trying to bring man or bringing man, not trying because God don't have to try, Amen. Bringing man back to himself, praise the Lord. And the first thing he does, praise the Lord, he brings them a law to convict them. Oh, glory to God. I can't go through the whole story. Hallelujah. He goes through, praise the Lord. And, and, and then, praise the Lord, he wraps himself in flesh, comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, praise the Lord. And, and the first message that comes out of his mouth, praise the Lord, is repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to talk to you about a kingdom, he said. So through his death, burial, and resurrection, he justifies man. He cleans man. Oh, you understanding what I'm saying? And, and changes man and gives man, praise the Lord, glory to God, his power back. If you want to know what happened in the wilderness, it was Jesus redoing the whole situation of Adam. Can I talk for just a couple of minutes? Adam, praise God, and Eve are at the tree. And the enemy tempts them. Praise the Lord. There are only three things that the devil uses. Y'all want me to tell you what it is? The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. 1 John 2, 15. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Got three trick ponies. That's all he got. That's all he got. And praise the Lord. The reason why Adam was severely punished, because he was sitting right there with Eve while the enemy was talking to her. He knew better, but he allowed it to happen. He willingly gave over his dominion. Oh, they quiet up in here. Thank you, Jesus. And so the moment that Jesus is baptized, the Bible says that the spirit drives him out 
into the wilderness. This is in the fourth chapter, praise the Lord, of, of St. Matthew and the fourth chapter of St. Luke. The spirit driveth him out in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Why does he need to be tempted of the devil? Because he is the last Adam. By one Adam, all men fell into sin. By the last Adam, all men are to be delivered from sin. And so he has to be tested. He has to be tried in order to be the proper sacrifice. And guess what the devil does? The devil tries him the same way with the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It's never a difference. He tested him. And Jesus did not fall like Adam did. He passed the test with flying colors. Hallelujah. And when he dies on the cross, praise the Lord, he, it qualifies him to be the perfect sacrifice. And so that everybody that puts their faith in him now, praise the Lord, has the testimony that they are perfected through the blood of Christ. Because of Christ, we now have our dominion back. Because of Christ, we now have our power back. Because of Christ, we now, listen, listen, listen. I want you to understand the revelation of this thing is that when Jesus walked on the earth, he did not walk on the earth as God. He walked on the earth as a man with God in him. He walked on the earth as a man in right relationship with God. Would not have been fair for him to be my example if he was doing God's stuff. What Jesus was doing, he was behaving as Adam would have behaved. We call it supernatural because naturally man is weak. But it's really, it's not really supernatural. It's supernatural because we don't normally see it. But it really is not supernatural. It is really God or man in his habitat doing what he's supposed to do. There's no way that man could have dominion over the fish of the sea if he didn't have power over the sea. So when Jesus walks on the water, he demonstrates that I got power over the water. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I got power over the water. Uh, 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 Peter, come on, walk on the water. I want you to understand that you have power over the water. You have power over the sea. I, and, and you're not going to do it as God. You're going to do it as a man in a right relationship with God. When you heal the sick, you're not going to heal it as God. You're going to heal the sick as a man that has God in him. And we don't believe these things because we don't teach these things. But I want you to understand, Jesus gave us power, hallelujah, to represent. So the revelation of, of, of the church, the revelation of the kingdom of God is that we are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. Has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with the fact that you are the governmental head, the governmental entity of the kingdom. Now, Satan has spent all of these centuries, all of these, praise the Lord, decades, setting up his kingdom on this earth, right? Hallelujah. Kingdoms are ruled by ideologies, ideals. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Every kingdom has an ideology, has a law, and it represents whatever the law of the king is. Hallelujah. And so, praise the Lord, when we come, we are the representatives of the kingdom of God, the true and the living God. So when we go into a region, when we go into an area, we now have a responsibility to enlarge or to spread the kingdom wherever we go, which means we cannot be that kind of entity if we only relegate what we believe, amen, between the night, the, the, the couple of hours that we're here on Sunday or the hour so that we're here on Wednesday night. And there cannot be a division between the secular and the sacred. Ooh. Yeah. I told y'all I ain't going to be able to finish this tonight. So you churching hard on Sunday, right? But when you get to work on Monday, you don't act like nothing you were doing on Sunday. 
they're at the water cooler complaining about the boss, and you helping them complain about the boss. Amen. Praise the Lord. They're still in time, and you still in time by taking an extra break and then lying about it. Yeah, I'm coming after you. I'm coming for you today. The reason why you can't do that is because you are not a part of that kingdom. You are representing another kind of kingdom with another idea. And God saved you to put you and make you infiltrate that job, make you infiltrate that profession with his message. And your message will be tainted if your life does not resemble the message that you're carrying. And so you're not going on a job with a Bible trying to preach to everybody, but you are a living Bible. You are a living letter. So they look and see the principles in your life. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. What is the purpose? You are the secret weapon of God in every faucet of the world. Uh, praise the Lord. I believe it's uh, Psalms. Is it Psalms 24? The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness, somebody get that for me right quick. Hallelujah. I, I want to make a point so that you'll understand this. Because I've moved from revelation to your responsibilities. I want, you, I want to show you something. What does it say? The earth is the Lord's. Listen, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. The world. The world. And they that dwell And therein. they that dwell. So there is a difference between earth and world. Earth, planet. Terra firma, ground. World deals with the systems. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Uh huh. The world. The world. And they, and they that dwell therein. So tell me, God is not interested in politics. Tell me God is not interested in media and entertainment. He created the first musician. First man that handles the harp. Jubal. Go back and read it. Where do you get the word jubilee from? Amen. Man that handled and created weapons. Tubal Cain. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Well, what, what am I trying to help you to understand? Everything that encompasses the world is an interest to God. Ooh, this is going to be a little juicy now. Yeah, yeah. The university is an interest to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Read. And they that dwell therein. And they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas. He hath founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the And flood. established it upon the flood. The Bible declares that out of the Garden of Eden there ran, praise the Lord, a river at four heads. Mm -hmm. When you read the word flood in the Hebrew, it is actually the word river. And so wherever there are Amen. Rivers, wherever there are waters, there is civilization established in those areas. And so God, amen, it all belongs to him. Why don't you look at somebody and say, it all belongs to God. So if it all belongs to God, why is Satan running everything? If it all belonged to God, why is the banking system being ran by folk that have an antichrist agenda? Why are they quiet tonight, Jesus? If God, the world belongs to God, why is it, praise the Lord, that the educational system is being ran by folk that don't even believe he's real and he exists and they're teaching and training your children. But it belongs to God. 
because you are the church. You are God's secret weapon to reclaim ground and territory that Satan. See, if you really begin to get and understand what I'm trying to teach you all tonight, then you won't be coming to church just to get a bump and a shout. I love the bump and shout. Y'all, I, I did it a few minutes ago. I love to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But, but, but if the only thing we're going to do, Marshall, is shout, then that's it. If the only thing that when I get to church I'm going to learn how to do is to say hallelujah and speak in tongues, that's not enough. Be it's a waste of power because God have called us, praise the Lord, hallelujah, that when we get in our little bubble in here and get full of the power and full of the Holy Ghost, what you going to do with that Holy Ghost? You mean he gave you the Holy Ghost just so you can walk around, bah, 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 and all of that, and then you go back home, and you go back to work, or you go back to school, you go back in your neighborhood, and you don't do jack squat with anything. What a waste. And then you got the nerve to get down on your knees and cry out to God, oh, God, I feel so far from you. I can't feel your spirit. You don't need to feel it because you ain't doing nothing with it. What do you want to feel it for? I just want to feel you. Okay, what you going to do with it after you feel it? You make, you make the spirit of God like it's a drug and you a junkie addicted to feeling the spirit. You church junkie you. Just come to get a hit. I'm depressed. I need a hit of Jesus. Oh. You use Jesus to anesthetize your pain. You use church positions, praise the Lord, because you don't have no position in the world. So the church is the only place where somebody going to look up to you like you somebody. It's your fault that you ain't doing nothing in the world. It's your fault that your community don't know who you are. It's your fault that you are not excelling on your job. You got the Holy Ghost. That means you've got supernatural ability living on the inside of you to go up there and take over. You are the salt. Okay. You only hear about salt two times. When you got too much or not enough. Child, you need some more salt in it. This, this food tastes kind of bland. It is. Amen. Child, you put too much salt in this. Child, we try to do send my blood pressure up. Are you understanding what I'm trying to tell you? And in order to salt something, you got to touch it. So then that means God is concerned about your secular job. Yeah, he's concerned. Well, God ain't worried about that stuff. And, and we teach people that. Why do we have, and I'm so glad for our bishop, Bishop Blue, because he can teach this a whole lot better than I can, but you just got me tonight. You stuck with me tonight, so you just got to hear it from my mouth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to God. You know, we, 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 we go to work, praise the Lord, and we just think that we're just going to work to make money so that we can provide for our families. That's a lie. You, you are God's secret weapon. How many have heard the story of the Trojan horse? Praise the Lord. They had been trying to get into Troy, and Troy had fortified walls. They could not penetrate it. They could not. And so what they decided to do, praise the Lord, they would act as if they had retreated, amen, back to Greece. And so, praise the Lord, what they would do, amen, is act as though, amen, that, that Troy had won and they were tired, they had given up. And so, since you beat us, what we're going to do, we're going to give you a gift. We're going to build you a big wooden horse. And the horse is sitting out there. And the, Troy, the, 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 the Trojans are so impressed with themselves, oh, they left us a gift. And they get the horse and they bring it with inside the gate. And what they did not know, that inside that wooden horse were full of soldiers that broke out of the horse and sacked the city from the inside. The Trojan horse. You are God's Trojan horse in the medical professions. You are God's Trojan horse in the educational field. You are God's 
Trojan horse in politics or in, praise the Lord, media entertainment? Why is it that we are looking at stuff on television that we have to turn off or turn our heads? I'm going to tell you why. Because the church is doing this. There used to be a time, praise the Lord, where certain words would not even be said on primetime television. That to hear certain things, you had to go on cable vision to hear it. But now, praise the Lord, they show boobs and everything on prime time and say whatever they want to say. Why do they do that? Because the church has retreated. We're and complaining about not having enough money. Y'all quiet in this sanctified place. Because we have not begun to understand the responsibility of the church. The responsibility of the church is not to a man lick our wounds behind these four walls. But it is when we get here, we are to learn our responsibilities, get our marching orders, and then expand in whatever area we go and take over. So you get on this job, right? When you get there, you, you, you get there on an entry-level position. Your job, when you get there, you think, oh, it's, it's to make money. No, no, no. Your job is why you're there to continue to sow seed, to continue to salt. You, you ought to be, praise the Lord, so powerful. See, I don't care about your power here in the church. Amen. Your power in the church, there's enough power in here to do whatever we need to do. How spiritual and powerful you are in here, don't make me know, never mind. Your, if you got that much power, the people you work with should know that there's something different about you. Your, your boss should know that there's something different about you. My boss called me and said, I need you to get here at 4 o'clock in the morning. Close to 5, my God. What do you want me here for, Mike? I want you to take that oil, and I need you to anoint the parameter. Because uh, he said, I know you say, he said, I still cuss a little bit, so I, you know, I ain't, but, but, but you know, uh, there's something wrong with me. But, but I know you say, and so uh, yeah, yeah, you can't lie, so you got to tell the truth. <laughs> and I need you to go pray around. And, and so, praise the Lord, I, it was my job, especially whenever the big wigs would come from corporate, it was my job to get out there and anoint the place. I was given liberties to be almost like a chaplain on the job, although they didn't have that kind of, you know. But God gave me, praise the Lord, favor because my life, amen, spoke volumes. And praise the Lord, I am to be salt, light, and yeast on my job to bring God to those that don't know him. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? What would happen if the church would take our mandate serious enough? You're around there marching around, amen, uh, 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 abortion clinics. Hallelujah. And, and, and calling folk all kind of names, which is crazy. Instead, why didn't you get them before they got to the abortion clinic? Well, they was in trouble as children, but you wouldn't show them no love. You were judging them. The little girl had a baby, and you put her out for church. And so she learned from that standpoint, praise the Lord, that if I get pregnant again, I'm just going to end it because it's hard for me. You taught her that. You taught her how to hypocrite because she saw you hypocriting. You were more concerned about the embarrassment of having a pregnant child than you were, amen, about the fact that dealing with the problems that cause it. Y'all don't like my talk up in here. Church folk know how to hide dirt, but we really don't know how to heal wounds. All the world needs, praise the Lord, for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. You're sitting here with the goods, and you're holding back. I'm going to have to quit, praise the Lord. But you're sitting here holding back, but God has charged you with the responsibility to make a difference. And you run around talking about how can a, a good God allow evil in the world? He didn't allow evil in the world. He put you here in the world. And you're not doing right. God told you something was wrong with that boy. You were supposed to go lay your hands. Maybe you can't, maybe as a teacher, you might can't go there and go, ta 
ta ta. You might can't shake him and rock him like you do, but you can when you get to him and and, and how you doing, Michael? God, you know everything okay? And while you're touching him, you can be praying over him. Woo! While you're passing out test scores, you can be talking about, amen, down in your spirit, praise the Lord. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. God tells you some stuff. God, it, you, there's no way in the world you can have the Holy Ghost and not have, praise the Lord, a conversation with God in your spirit. That God don't let you know that something is going on down on the inside. You just ignore it because you mad because your check was short. God promised you that if you would seek him first, he would add all of these things. He said, I'll pay you. If you make the kingdom agenda your priority, I'll pay you. Lord, they quiet over here at the way. He says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. I'm bringing it in. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Keys denote authority. Keys denote access. Somebody say access. God has given you access. He's given you, what are you going to do with your access? The reason why it's going to be sad when we, get, when we stand before God and we get judged is because we got access. Yeah. Yeah, see, see, the son of man, he going to hell. When he stands before God, the one that have not accepted the Lord as his, as his Lord and Savior, he going to hell, and all he's standing in the line to do is to find out why he's going to hell. That's why he's in the line. If you find yourself at the great white throne judgment, just know you're going to hell. You're just trying, you're standing there to find out what you're going there for. True, spirit-filled believers are not in the judgment line to go to hell. Believers are in the judgment line that have their works judged about what they did while they were on earth. And the reason why your judgment is going to be such a sore one is because you have abilities and advantages that the world don't have. You got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God. The Holy Ghost knows everything. How would you like to walk into the boardroom meeting knowing everything? You do. Yes, you do. If you tap into the spirit, my shata. If you tap into the spirit before you get to work in the morning instead of getting mad and kicking the dog because you got to get up early. If you would get up and tap into the spirit, hallelujah, and speak to God, God would put something in your spirit and say, now Johnny, he's getting ready to pull something. But when you get there, you sit there and you be quiet. Don't you say nothing or, or don't, don't do this. And don't. God, God will begin to deal with you. He'll begin to speak with you and show. I mean, he'll give you dreams about what's going to happen before. I had a dream one night, praise the Lord, that we were going to have an audit, praise the Lord, hallelujah, at our job. And just to show there was an audit there and because we had the dream, we was ready, praise the Lord, because the Lord spoke to us and gave us a warning. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit it's for more than for you to just speak in tongues. But the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. He's omniscient. And if you draw on that living water, he'll give you ideas. He'll give you plans. Y'all ain't understanding me. That's your responsibility. We ought to be the most smartest people. Our children ought to be the most smartest in school. Because they got the Holy Ghost. to know something. Shouting and you don't know John 3.16. You ain't got nothing to shout about if you don't know John 3.16. Y'all don't know my talk. All right, let me bring it in. Keys denote authority. When you have keys, you have responsibility. Say amen. If somebody give you the key to the car, they expect you to put gas in the car. If I give you the key to my car to drive it, you better bring it back with some gas in it. Amen. Oh, y'all don't like my talk. I'm 
just, I'm just, just if I ever give you the keys and you drive and come, it needs to have some gas when it come back. Because I will call you. My cash app is. Amen, Zion. Power is dynamis. Supernatural ability. Look at somebody and say, I have dynamis. Yes, I have supernatural ability working in my life. I got dominion. Lord, have mercy. All right, I'm going to finish this the next time. I'm going to bring this in. But you understand that it must be built on revelation. Revelation on who Jesus is. Revelation on who mankind is. Revelation of the kingdom of God. And then there is a responsibility. I think I'm going to come back and talk about responsibility a little bit more. Because you got all of this power, all of this wisdom. And praise the Lord. And you are forsaking your responsibility. Even Peter Parker was taught better than that. Spider-Man was told that, that with great power comes great response. Isn't that what it said? Come on, my Spider-Man friend. <laughs> with, with, great, with great power comes great responsibility. Too much is given, much is required. What are you doing with your dunamis? doing with the influence? Influence is leadership. Do you know you're a leader? Well, I don't have the title. They didn't make me supervisor. They passed over me. So what? You still got influence. Stuff don't get done until you walk in. You got influence. Sometimes your boss don't even make a decision unless they ask you. What do you think about such and such? That's influence. If God has given you the ear of whoever your leader is, that's influence. Ask Brother Daniel. Daniel was set for life. He had so much influence that those that worked with him, his co-worker, were jealous enough to have him thrown in the lion's den. You running out there a title, you better ask God for influence. I want the position. Do you know most people that got the that got the the, 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 the the position or the title don't have the influence? And don't have the money. Because most time when you get the title, praise the Lord, that's when they put you on a, a salary. And salary simply just means they can work you for long and not pay you the money. And there are some people that just say, you know what, I, you ain't got, listen, you ain't got to give me the title, just let me work, let, just let me work on the clock. So whatever time I'm working, I'm getting compensated for it. But people that have an ego to feed, an ego problem, what you want, you want a title, but you really don't want no influence. Baby, when you get influence, you can write your own check. When you get influence, glory to God, they believe that if you walk off the job, the place going to shut down. I forget when I told my boss, I told him, I said, I'm, I'm going into ministry full time. I got, I've been with them, praise the Lord, for almost 19 and a half years. And, and, and praise the Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let, I'm, what are you leaving for, man? you one of my, you one of my best workers, man. I said, why are you waiting now to tell me? I'm gone now. Every time they see me, you coming back? Nope. I've been delivered. What am I trying to help you understand? You are the kingdom of God. You are the representative of the kingdom everywhere you go.